Good morning, good morning. We have a great show today. Uh, we have Brother Abdul Muhammad, uh, Justice for Abdul Muhammad. You heard him on our radio show, on the Open Line radio show. Uh, greetings to everybody in South Louisiana in the five parish area of Lafayette and surrounding areas. We're live on AOC Community Media. Without any further ado, we can bring Brother Abdul on. We don't know if he's under time's constraint, but we're going to bring him on. Good morning, good brother. Hey, good morning, brother. How you doing? Uh, we're doing great out here in South Louisiana, besides yes, my sir. calamities I've been having. But, you know, we every time we're able to bring a show, whether it's on radio, whether it's on uh, local cable TV, uh, we, we feel uh, privileged to have brothers like yourself on and expressing the, uh, the need for everybody to understand what is going on in today's society, especially when it comes to the education of our youth. Absolutely. Brother, uh, you care to tell us about yourself a little bit? Yes, sir. Well, uh, brother, I've been an educator in Chicago uh, for the last 29 years. I graduated from Southern University in Baton Rouge, Louisiana, and I actually did my student teaching. Let me just say this, because uh, I know this is in Lu the Louisiana area. You know, uh, my parents are from Louisiana. My mother and my father both from Louisiana, from North Louisiana, and they met at Southern University. And of course, Southern was the school for all of uh, our family. And so I graduated from Southern University with a degree in secondary education and moved to Chicago and have been working with our children in the city of Chicago for the last 29 years. Uh, I have been awarded the teacher of the year for the city of Chicago. I was nominated twice uh, for the Golden Apple Award and I was featured in Who's Who for American High School Teachers for four or five consecutive years. And I've been in some, and many of your listeners have heard about Chicago and the things that take place uh, in the city of Chicago. And I've been working in some of the most challenging environments in the city of Chicago for the last 29 years. Uh, what happened recently is uh, when I transitioned to a new school, uh, there was a huge controversy, uh, believe it or not, uh, uh, with me being at a new school in Chicago. The name of that school is Lynn Bloom High School which is one of the top ranked schools in the city of Chicago. And the thing that your listeners have to understand is that there are certain schools, uh, as many of your listeners may know, that uh, they only want certain type of people in these schools. So a strong black man that's standing up and advocating for black children and holding white teachers accountable, which is exactly what I did. This is not what Chicago public schools wanted. This is not what uh, the white teachers at that particular school wanted. So the teachers and the Chicago public school officials worked for eight months to get me removed from the school, even though my track record for the last 25 years in Chicago has been nothing but stellar. I've gone in schools and transformed every school that I've walked into uh, in the city of Chicago. But this is just how far uh, the district will go to remove strong and effective black leadership, which in effect damages the education of black children. Yes, my brother. And uh, one of the things that we talked about when you were a guest on the Open Line Radio show last year at the, in, the, in the middle part of the year, one of the things we seem to have short memories of, of uh, historical moments when uh, Blacks fought for the right to be able to go into the schools and be teachers and educators. And in my the sense of, you know, Black History Month, whatever they want to call that, I, I, we try to celebrate Black History 365 down this way. Uh, how important it is for a young black male, and I know the black females also, but how important it is to see someone like yourself and in that position and the way people, uh, perceptions are here in the South that a black man can't do those things. Right, right. Well, yeah, those perceptions are all over the country, brother. And unfortunately, uh, there are a lot of white people that have those same exact perceptions. Uh, and unfortunately, there are black people in leadership uh, that have those perceptions as well. Uh, all, of, all of the research that has been done on uh, young black people in public schools, all of the research shows that black children having black teachers and black leaders in front of them helps to improve the education of those black children. So now Chicago Public Schools promotes this on their very website 
but they also work against effective black leaders. So they say one thing out of their mouth, but their actions are the exact opposite. Black children need teachers in front of them that understand their culture, understand their thinking, understand their way of life and are patient with them and will help them get to the next level of education that we're trying to get them to. Anybody who wants to educate black children effectively must have black teachers and black leaders in front of them. The thing that we run into, right, because uh, district leaders all over the country will say that, but what they're looking for is a certain type of black leader. They're looking for a certain type of black teacher. If I had gone into Limbloom High School and I had lipstick on and a dress and a wig, then Chicago Public Schools would have celebrated me and they would have elected me the principal of the year. But since I am a strong black man and unapologetically black and a Muslim, they did everything within their power to work against me, even though my track record speaks for itself uh, for the last 25 years. So if we're trying to educate black children, which I've done for the last, I've done it for 29 years. This is all I know. All I've done in my entire adult life is educate black children. If this is what we're trying to do, then we need black leaders and black teachers in the classrooms and in the schools with black children. And, and I'll say this, brother uh, Jay, uh, you know, the research says this. But like as as black people, we didn't need to research to know that this was the case. We already knew that black teachers and black leaders are more effective with black children. So the research only proved it to to the to, to white people who were not ready to accept what we already knew. What, what you think is the motivation uh, from the aspects of targeting black leaders, uh, uh, black ed uh, educators? Uh, in your uh, your field, what do you think is the motivation for that? You know, I think I think there's different motivations, but at the end of the day, it's really an attack on black children. So we have to for Chicago, and I don't I don't want your audience to think that this is limited to Chicago. Right. It happened with me in Chicago, but as I've been going on television and on radio and on podcasts, educators from all over the country are reaching out to me. And telling me that the same thing is happening in their district, the same thing has happened to them. So I don't want you to think that just because I'm in Chicago, that it's only happening in Chicago. Absolutely not. This crisis of education is happening all over the country with black educators. There's a systematic attack on black educators uh, in the United States. And we're just manifesting what's going on uh, in the city of Chicago. But in reality, what it is, uh, Brother Jay is it is an attack on black children. The schools currently, right now, are school to prison pipelines. That is what you have in every school right now. You have a school to prison pipeline, and it's been like that for the last 60 or 70 years. Now, I'm gonna give you an example of our brother, Brother Malcolm X. When Malcolm was in eighth grade, this is the school to prison pipeline with Malcolm. When Malcolm was in eighth grade, he went to his teacher, his white teacher, and even though he had the highest grades in the class, star student, he went to his white teacher and said, this teacher asked him, well, what do you want to do when you grow up? And Malcolm said that he wanted to be a lawyer. And his white teacher told Malcolm to his face. He said, you'll never be a lawyer. He said, white people won't hire an N-word, right? And black people not going to hire a black lawyer, but you work well with your hands. You should be a carpenter. Now, that day, Malcolm dropped out of the eighth grade and turned to what? He turned to a life of crime. That's the school to prison pipeline. Right there in the life of Malcolm X. And he ended up in prison. But the thing that dashed his hopes was when this teacher told him he wouldn't amount to anything. Now I'm gonna bring it up to today. When your children come home from school, I'm talking to all black folks. And you ask them, baby, what you learned today? And they say, mom, I ain't learned nothing. You think they just saying that? No, they're not learning anything in these schools. The teachers are not teaching them anything. So it is the same effect of what happened to Malcolm has happened to our children. Because if the teacher actually believed that your children would amount to something, they would spend time, effort, energy, teaching them every day. But if I don't believe you're going to amount to anything, I'll sit behind the paper, behind the new the desk and read the paper. I'll be on the Internet. I'll let the children get on their phones. I'll let them fall asleep in class. 
because I really in my heart don't believe that the people in front of me will amount to anything. So what ends up happening? The school becomes a pipeline to prison. And then black teachers and black leaders come into those very same school, into those very same environments, environments that people say are hopeless. And then what we do is the same thing I did. Rather than it being a school to prison pipeline, when I got into education, I started to take the students to the college fairs myself. I would spend my Saturdays taking them to college fairs. I would spend my time, I would go above and beyond to make sure that these black children have other opportunities besides a pathway to prison. And these are the leaders and teachers that Chicago Public Schools is working against because they do not want our children to have these other pathways. They want our children on a pathway to prison. Now, if you ask them, do you want black children on a pathway to prison? Out of their mouth, they're gonna tell you no. But if you look at their actions, and actions speak louder than words, the actions are telling you. If I target black teachers, when I came into Chicago Public Schools, 50% of the teachers were black. And Chicago Public Schools systematically removed black teachers from the classroom. Wow. It was so bad that a few years ago, they were sued for their conspiracy, for their plot to remove effective black teachers from teaching black children. So if you ask them, are you for the school to prison pipeline? They're gonna say no. But ask them, well, why did you remove the, why did you systematically remove black teachers from the classroom? That's because they really want the school to prison pipeline. So actions speak louder than words, brother Jay. So they removed black teachers. When I came in Chicago public school, it was 50% black teachers, educators. Now it's 19%. What happened to those other black educators, they were systematically removed. Wait a minute. Then when Rahm Emanuel was mayor, Rahm Emanuel closed 53 schools in the black community. And they said they the, the false promise, because there's always a false promise. The false promise was the black children, 30,000 black children that were impacted by this and hundreds of black teachers would not fall through the cracks. And what happened? the black students and the black teachers fell through the crack. So out of their mouth, they're saying, oh, we're not with the school to prison pipeline. We want to shut the school to prison pipeline. It sounds good, but what do your actions say? You systematically fire black teachers, you close black schools, and now you're attacking black leaders, black principals and assistant principals that are effective with black children. It is because you want to keep the school to prison pipeline intact because you know that you're not building schools, but you are building prisons. And you don't want your children, Pedro Martinez don't want his children in prison. It is the black children that they want to fill the prisons with. So we have to take out these effective black leaders that are creating other pathways for black children to walk down. Yes, sir, I totally agree with you. Louisiana, in the condition Louisiana is in, my brother. Uh, can you hear me fine? Yes, sir, I can hear you. Yeah. Uh, Louisiana has the most horrendous records when it's come to dealing with young people. We know recently they just put out an article, uh, one of the so-called think tanks out there, that Louisiana is the worst place for black children well-being. They didn't say white. Mm -hmm. uh, they say black children. And we know Louisiana criminal justice system dealing with juveniles has been in disarray. Uh, they've been time and time again, different uh, headline grabbing right. you know, situation with, with the youth. So we know Louisiana is the prime example example of a prison to pipeline. Absolutely. If you ever want to do the blueprint for right. prison to pipeline, Louisiana, to the point of mm -hmm. sending kids to Angola. And brother Jay, I'm going to tell you this. This is exactly how they want it to be. Now, I worked in juvenile justice right here in Chicago. I worked at a school called Nancy B. Jefferson, which is inside of the juvenile detention center. And when I got to Nancy B. Jefferson, my first day, the principal who was walking me around told me that the school was 85% black boys. Now, here I am, a black man, in a school uh, that's inside of the juvenile detention center in Chicago, where you hear about all the crime, 
all the violence, all the shooting, all the carjackings. And people say they want to put an end to that. Now, here I am working with the very children that have been accused of doing those things. And it's 85 percent black boys, 14 percent Latino. And I come to this school. And when I got to this school, the young black boys had no concern about education. They only came to school because they made them come down to school. Weren't thinking about graduating. When I got there and started to work with these young brothers, we changed the entire culture of the school inside the juvenile detention center where rather than them just coming down to school as a ritual, now these same young brothers that the whole world has thrown away, now they're coming down to school and they want to graduate from school. They want to earn their high school diploma while they're incarcerated. I work with the brothers. They weren't able to put the various gangs in the same room, the GDs, the BDs, the Vice Lords, the Four Corner Hustlers, the Black Souls, the Latin Kings, the EBK. They couldn't put them in the room together. And I work with these brothers. And because I work and built relationships with these brothers, we were able to put these brothers who saw themselves as enemies and ops in the same room together. While I was at Nancy B. Jefferson, the school that is in Chicago in the juvenile detention center that houses the very people, the young people that you see on television doing these various crimes. I'm working with them every day. And one day I received an email about this play. It's called Hamilton, one of the greatest stage plays in the history of stage plays. And in the email, it said that 1900 Chicago public school students went to see Hamilton. And my students are incarcerated. I'm incarcerated with them. When I get to the school, I have to walk through two line scans just to get into the school. So I'm incarcerated right along with these children. I reached out to the producer of Hamilton and asked her, will she bring my, st I told her my students can't leave because they're incarcerated. Will you bring the Hamilton play to Nancy B. Jefferson? And I worked with that producer for two years. And at the end of that two year period, we were able to bring the Hamilton play, one of the greatest stage plays in the history of stage plays to the students, the incarcerated students, the same ones that everybody says you can't do anything with them. We brought the Hamilton play to the students of Nancy B. Jefferson. And while we were there, the producer pulled me to the side and she said, Mr. Muhammad, the, the, this play, Hamilton, has only left the stage twice. Once when we brought it to the White House for Michelle and Barack Obama. And the other time is when we brought it to the students of Nancy B. Jefferson. Now, if you want to end, as they say, you want to end the school to prison pipeline, I'm in the school to prison pipeline and I'm ending it. And Brother Jay, I'm going to tell you this. When, while I was at Nancy B. Jefferson, this was the first time that I was uh, attacked by Chicago public schools. I'm doing this magnificent work, the work that they say they want done. And I was attacked, and this was in 2016, by Chicago public schools, even though I was doing this uh, magnificent work. When I was attacked the first time, my brother, I didn't, I didn't decide to fight back during that time. I just wanted it to be over with. Um, so I, I didn't really do anything. I, I didn't raise my voice. Uh, and, and, you know, I regret that, but when they came against me again for doing the same phenomenal work that I've been doing for the last 25 years, I could not stay silent. I could not, um, I, I had to raise my voice and say something about what's happening to effective black leaders. And I want to say this while I'm on this point. Um, I would like everybody, we have a website that details what's going on because it's not just me, it's other black educators as well in Chicago. And we have a website. The website is justiceforabdulmuhammad.com. On the website, justiceforabdulmuhammad.com, you can get some background. There are videos that's breaking down things about this particular case that's going on in Chicago with myself, uh, as well as you can email uh, the mayor. You can sign up for the website. We would love for you to do that so we can stay in contact with you. 
You can also email the mayor, Brandon Johnson. He has not spoken on this and we can get into that a little bit later, uh, but you can email the mayor straight from the website. You don't even have to write the email. All you have to do is click on his name and the email populates and you click send. So we want you to register for the website at justiceforabdulmohammed.com. And on that website, you can email the mayor straight from that website. You can also sign the petition uh, on that website. And last thing is there's a GoFundMe as well on that website. If you want to donate to the GoFundMe, uh, that is also on the website. But the website is justiceforabdulmohammed.com. So, Brother Jay, uh, to answer your question, uh, you, you brought out juvenile justice. I worked in juvenile justice and the, the Nancy B. Jefferson in Chicago, which is the largest juvenile detention center in the, in the country, if not the largest, it's the second largest. But I worked there. And when I was there, I was blessed to transform Nancy B. Jefferson like I transformed every other school. And because of my transformative work with black children, I was attacked by Chicago public schools, just like I'm being attacked right now. Wow, that that is, I mean, brother, I understand why you feel the way you feel. You can't let things like that go, especially being on the inside and knowing the dynamics of what's going on in the system. Uh, how much support are you getting from uh fellow professional, because you are a principal. I want people to know that. Right, you right. have a lot of other titles. You're so humble. You call yourself brother, but you you have a lot of titles, man. And uh, how much uh, support are you getting from professionals such as yourself? You know, Brother Jay, I'll say this. Uh, I have a lot of support from principals and assistant principals. You know, the, the sad reality is a lot of our people are afraid to speak up. Uh, you know, because they're afraid for their position or whatnot, but they reach out to me and tell me that they support me and they support my fight because they know that there's that the Chicago public schools targets black leaders. And I'm going to try to put something on the screen if I possibly can. I'll try. If not, then I just move on. Um, see. The. Uh, the educators know that Chicago public schools targets black leaders. And so this is why they're standing with me. I don't know if I'll be able to do it, my brother. I'm just gonna not worry about it. So, uh, but, I, I, but I was gonna try to put it on the screen, but I'll just share it. There was a journalist by the name of Sarah Cart. Sarah Cart uh, is a journalist for the Sun-Times and Sarah Cart wrote an article on August 1st of 2023 regarding this situ situation. And in Sarah Carp's articles, she made three points. The points that she made, we were already making these points in the public, right? Sarah Carp wrote the article and she agreed with the points that we were making. The first point that Sarah Carp uh, brought out in her article on August 1st in the Sun-Times newspaper is that Chicago public schools targets black principals. So this is why the principals will reach out to me saying they support because we already knew we were being targeted. Sarah Carp proved it. So through the Freedom of Information Act, Sarah Carp got the names and racial makeup of all of the principals that were removed by Chicago public schools in one year. It was 10 principals. Two were white, eight were black. So uh, black principals were 80 percent of the removals, right? Now, of the two of the eight black principals, there was one black woman and seven black men. So black men were 70 percent of the removals in Chicago public schools. But black men only make up eight percent of the principals in Chicago public schools. So we're set we're eight percent of the principals. But we're. Seventy percent of the removals. So this brother is what Sarah Carp brought out in her article. Uh, in the Sun Times, we had already been saying that Chicago public schools targets black leaders, and Sarah Carp proved that in her article. The second thing that Sarah Carp proved in her article is that the charges that they used to remove principals were petty charges, they were flimsy charges. So, uh, for example, well, what did they say you did, uh, Brother Muhammad? What did they say you did? Well, one of the things that they said is. Oh, you know, uh, Muhammad came to work late 
on, and this is December 22nd of 2022, that I came to work late. One of the white teachers lied and said I came to work late. But now the, uh, let's say I did come to work late. You, you know, you don't fire a principal. Even if I came to work late, that's not a reason to be fired. Another thing that they lied and said is, oh, Mr. Muhammad escorted a student to the Sitco gas station to buy snacks. Now, the school that I'm at, my brother and dear listeners, is in an area in Chicago called Inglewood, right, which is an extremely rough area in Chicago. They have the second highest homicide rates in the city in the Inglewood area. The school is in Inglewood. And but when you read the law department's report in two separate places in the law department report, it, it says clearly that the student left the school to go get snacks. But they wanted to get rid of me so bad that they lied and said I took the student to Sitco. So this is insanity. This is corruption. Right. Um, from the Chicago public school officials and the Chicago public schools law department. So. But Sarah Karp, Sarah Karp got my report. She read it and she was like, well, this is petty. You don't you don't remove a principal. Even if I let's say I did walk the student to the gas station so she would be safe in this neighborhood where we know that there's high crime. I should be committed if I, I should be celebrated. Now, Brother Jay, we've had in Chicago, we've had five students that were killed in the last two weeks. Not not fights, not a broken nose, not the, not shot in the leg. We've had five students killed at school. Imagine you send your child to school. Just imagine. And they come home and you say, what happened at school today? Oh, well, it was a double homicide. That's exactly what happened right here in Chicago at Innovations High School. So if I was walking a student to keep them safe, I should be celebrated. But no, Chicago public schools, first they lie, right? But that's that's what we're dealing with. We're dealing with that kind of corruption. Brother Muhammad, uh, you know, uh, you just mentioned something. Uh, the two young men that got killed in Chicago right. on last week, I think, a uh, week before last. Week before uh, that last. That was troubling to me. Right. And uh, to read the story behind the story, because you got, uh, and I know I'm segueing a little bit and stuff, mm -hmm. but you got a lot of people out there perpetrating all these, this this warfare against our with our youth by putting up blogs and talking about yeah, the ops, put some money down to put a bag on, you know, uh, going back to what happened in Memphis with, with the rap. Because I follow those stories to try right, to right. put in the psyche of why we so easily kill our, our, uh, each other. And this is the thing right here. Even when the kids get a break to go to, back to school, because I think those uh, uh, two young people had got into some type of trouble, is that there are no constraints on, uh, besides what you're trying to do. Other supports people to say, look, we know they got a lot going on in the hood. Right. You know, We know about old block. We know about right, all of right. that stuff, even in Louisiana. But right. what are, are the, greater, uh, the greater community or the system itself doing the Mid help mitigate some of that stuff right. besides what are you doing you know you know brother um you know i would say because i know a lot of the principals so I, definitely within the schools that people are doing the best that they can uh in in most cases uh, you know chicago has challenges that we have to work as a as a group right to overcome but where the problem lies is when somebody has a solution to the problem, but you don't like the person because of their religion or because of their race or because of their gender, right? So if I can go into the juvenile detention center where you have the very shooters and killers that we talk about, right? Anybody 17 and under, they had to come see me. If, if I can go in there and work with these young brothers and, and change their mindset, right? Why would you attack, if you, if you want solutions, right? Why would you attack a person that has the solution? It is because they want the solution to come from uh, somebody that they approve of. And because the solution does not come from somebody that they approve of, then they reject the solution. So, you know, that's ignorant, brother, you know? Uh, but, you know, that that is exactly what's happening. But I will say, because I know the work that some of the principals and assistant principals do, and, and they do effective work. 
But again, this is why we need uh, black leaders in black schools with black children, because when you build relationships with children, then they're going to let you know what's about to happen before it happens so that you can prevent it. You understand what I'm saying? Yes. And this is, and brother, I'm just telling you, when I was at a school called Percy L. Julian, which is in an area in Chicago called the Wild Hundreds, right? And it was all kind of drama, gang activity and things going on. And we work with the students, with the teachers, with the staff, with uh, the CPD, Chicago Police Department. We work with everyone in the community to turn the situation around. And in the time that I was there, we turned it around. When I first got there, you had parents coming up there wanting to jump on students. You had people coming up out the neighborhood, gangbangers wanting to jump on students, all kind of, you had students within the school wanting to jump on students. When I left, brother, as uh, God is my witness, they used to fight in the middle of the street on the last day of school. When I was there, they got their book bags and went home on the last day of school. Now, it's not, an e it's not as easy as talking about it, but this is the work that I've done in Chicago public schools for the last 25 years. And what I'm saying is what you say. It should never be a situation where you drop your children off and they're murdered at school that should just not happen and you you talked about the two brothers but we had that was two weeks ago you had two young men shot down in front of a innovations high school which is downtown that's in downtown chicago yes. then we had prior to the one the two at innovations there was a young brother that was killed in front of a school right in front of the school cics longwood right here in chicago there wasn't a lot of news coverage of that then just last week we had two students at Sin High School. Three were shot, but two died. One died that day, and then one died later. Brother, th like that is absolutely unacceptable for children to go to school and be shot down in front of the school. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. It's, 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 there, there's no excuse for that. There's no reason for that. But the sad reality, brother, is that the leadership in Chicago public schools is so arrogant they don't have a solution, but they will reject those who do if the ones that do have the solution aren't the ones that they approve of. And that is insanity and corruption. But that's exactly what we're dealing with. And, and the, the, the game plan is, is they want people to fail. They want right. our children to fail. Now, the whole thing, and I know in Louisiana, we have a new administration. And I, I want to Pepper Louisiana and not because I know your expertise in Chicago, but you, you know, you, you're a global brother, you're global, you know how the global situation is. Uh, they are talking about now what we call school choice in the sense that this governor want to push that whole notion. And the thing is, uh, they, you know, it's, a, it's to keep certain kids, certain young people in certain conditions. And it's also to pick the ones out that they want to, control right absolutely you know? right and we have to stop falling for things like that right and we have to look uh, at the overall health of our uh educational system within the black community right. and people don't want to do that they absolutely on inclusiveness well, inclusiveness passed uh passed by a long time ago my brother right and, right. Uh, and i do i am not a member of the nation of islam but i take a lot from brother um Louis Farrakhan, when he say right. there's no inclusion, so we have to do for ourselves. Absolutely. You know, brother, uh, you make a great point because we always get into these debates and you will have people tell you that the conservatives or the Republicans, oh, they don't like us, but the, the Democrats and the liberal white people, they do. And that's a lie, brother. All these all these people that lied on me at Limbloom were all so-called liberal white people. They right. hate us just as much as the yeah. conservatives or the Republicans, so let's not get it twisted, right? And think that it's one group that's with us and it's another group that's against us. When you, uh, the if the result ends up being the same result, if you go to a so-called conservative state, a Republican state, a red state, and your children are not educated and your children fighting every day and they locking them up and throwing away the key, right, in the red state, and you say this is happening because this is a red state, then you come to, uh, a city like Chicago, and they're not educating your children. They're locking them up. 
and they throwing away the key and they attacking your leaders if the result is the same then what are we arguing about oh they're a democrat they're a republican they're a liberal they are progressive chicago has been a democratic city uh as long as it's been a city and chicago is as martin luther king jr said chicago is more racist than any city in mississippi so what are we talking about what we need to do as a people is we need to understand that it is for us to educate our children and what what we don't want is we don't want you to interfere with the education so let me give you an example of what i'm talking about because as black people we have a right to self-determination we have a right to determine our future a right to elect our leaders when i got to this school Limbloom, i was elected by black people the community elected me to be the principal unanimous but because uh my name was abdul muhammad and the chicago public schools leadership did not approve of a muslim being the principal of this high profile school then they rejected the decision of the local school council and tried to get them to change their decision now brother the local school council only has two jobs to approve the budget and hire the principal that's the only two jobs they got and because the community the parents the and the community and the teachers selected a principal that had a religion that they did not approve of they tried to get them to change their decision and when the local school council stood by their decision that is when the, the chicago public school officials worked with members of the ctu to come up with these 83 lies these 83 false charges and remove me from the school based on the lies of seven white teachers so what are we talking about we're talking about robbing black people of the right to self-determination the so-called conservatives say oh you should pull yourself up by your bootstraps then when we do that then we're attacked because we're doing that and the liberals say well just you know just rely on us just accept welfare just let us determine your future let us select your leaders let us tell you who need, you need to be friends with and we should reject both of them we are intelligent enough uh wise enough to uh, educate our children and to do things for ourselves but here's what we don't want brother jay and i'll end this comment with this what we don't want is to educate our children ourselves but then you keep all the money that we pay in taxes and we have to scrape money together to educate our children. No, well, if we can't get uh, equal education for black, brown, red, yellow, and white, if the education can't be equal, then we need to separate and we need the money that we pay in taxes to go to the education of our children because we can do a good job of educating them ourselves without all of this additional uh control from people who don't live in our community brother jay you if if we went to chinatown and the the chinese people selected a chinese principal over chinese children in chinatown i know y'all may not have one but we got one in chicago if i came in as a black teacher and i got a friend of mine and said look i don't we don't like the chinese principle that y'all elected and we're going to do everything within our power to work against this chinese principle they will run us out of chinatown they will run us if we did that in pilsen in chicago where the latinos live they will run us out of pilsen if we did that in schomburg where the jewish people live they will run us out of schomburg no other people will allow you to come in their community and dictate to them but we have a group of white teachers that are in our community dictating to our community who we can select as the leader of a school in our own community that is insane that is corrupt but that's exactly what's happening in the city of chicago well everywhere my brother they have a problem with strong black leadership Absolutely. especially when it's a positive leadership and that's been proven time and time again now uh, as far as uh, yourself my brother what 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 where do you go from the point where you're at mm -hmm. and what is your, your intention if it's not any definitely not no strategy that you want to keep secret but 
where where do you go uh besides I, I saw you with the press conference uh, with Ben Crump right, attorney right. Crump, and I know is some uh litigation that you might be right, doing yeah. to change some some dynamics sometimes that's the only way they they right. understand yeah uh, yeah it's sad brother Jay but you know uh that is all they understand because as long as we're protesting and we're you know they just ignore you you know because they have the power uh, Frederick Douglass said power can seize nothing without a demand that's backed by power. So, you know, as long as we were protesting and talking and having press conferences, which all which were important to get the word out to our people. But the legal um, route is the best route because they're forced to respond to the legal route. And I, I'm saying the best route. I'm saying that in quotes. It's a good route. Let me say that because they're forced to respond. When you go uh, the legal route, it's sad, but it, it, it's real. In in democratic liberal Chicago, uh, you have a Chicago public schools law department that is fabricating cases, making up lies against black principals to remove them from their schools. I'll give you an example of uh, my 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 sister and my brother who are fighting with me, uh, Dr. Kimberly Gibson, who was at a school called Harriet Tubman. She's a black teacher in Harriet Tubman High uh, Elementary School is on the north side. So it's in a white community. She's the first black principal at the school. And when she comes into the school and starts to hold white teachers accountable, they were not treating the black special education students in the same manner that they treated the white special education students. And Dr. Gibson held them accountable. And when she started to hold them accountable, the white teachers united and protested and CPS sided with them, not sided with, with her. And even though she was right, even though she was defending uh, the education of black children, they sent her a text message uh, and they said in the text message, you're not gonna be here long in word, right? So now she reported that to Chicago Public Schools. She reported it to the police department. She reported it to the FBI. Chicago Public Schools did absolutely nothing. Brother, how is how's this even happening? Now, these are white liberals, our so-called, the so-called allies. These are white progressives. The so-called allies sending text messages that you would think a Klan member right there in Louisiana would send. This is happening right in Chicago. The White Citizens Council would send that text message, but so will the Chicago Teachers Union teachers. Because unfortunately, they're one and the same when it comes to black people. That's the sad reality that we have to adjust to. So, brother, uh, my other brother, Gerald Morrow was at a school called Dunbar High School. They were they removed him in December of 2022. And here we are in February of 2024. And they still have not told him what he's done. Like, he don't even know what he's done. Like, why was he removed? He doesn't know. How, how does that happen? This is the level of corruption that we are dealing with in Chicago public schools. They are fabricating cases against strong, effective black leaders to remove them from the schools. But it's not an attack on the leader. It's really an attack on black children because somebody has to feed the school to prison pipeline. And unfortunately, the plan is for black children to feed that pipeline. And anybody who interferes with that plan must be removed. And that is the sad reality. And again, we would like all of our, our listeners and viewers to go on the website, justiceforabdulmohammed.com. Uh, justiceforabdulmohammed.com is the website. We would like you to sign the petition, uh, register for the website, uh, send a letter to Mayor Brandon Johnson or an email. All you have to do is click on his name. It's right there on the website. You click on Mayor Brandon Johnson's name. The email populates and all you have to do is click send. You don't have to write anything, just click send. There's also a, a GoFundMe on that website. And if you would like to donate to this fight, you can donate to it right there on the justiceforabdulmohammed.com website, the GoFundMe. Uh, if you scroll down, you will see it. Um, and the fight is for the education of black children. Even in Chicago, our children are being miseducated. Our teachers are being removed from the classroom and our leaders who are creating pathways for black children are being targeted and removed. And my brother, why have you on the line? I know time is winding down. Uh, 
let me ask you your feelings on uh, what we call black history as yes, an educator. And I know in Louisiana, again, we, we had, we have a governor, uh, you know, uh, we had a so-called conservative governor, democratic governor. Now we have a so-called extremist radical right winger. And I call them many times, uh, basically a white supremacist. He's from my area, but the whole thing about history, black history mm -hmm. being taught in school or being whatever. And then the black history that I know of where they were teaching was watered down history, right. half truths and lies. And the thing is, how do we continue if those of us who want to uh, give our kids a dose of real black history, should we fund that ourselves or should we put a plan in ourselves and don't depend on the public school system like we call it down here in Louisiana? Yes. Well, brother, you know, the move, uh, you know, the move is in the so-called red states. Like I said before, if the result is the same, whether they're liberal, conservative, red state, uh, blue state, right, Democrat, Republican, if the result is the same, then that means the mindset is the same. In the red state, they'll come out and say, they'll vocally say, you know, we don't want this woke education. We don't want them teaching black history. We don't want white children to be in the classroom. Uh, feeling uncomfortable because you're talking about what white people actually did. So they will come out and, and vocally say that we don't want this in, in the red state, like where you are, right? Then in Illinois or in Chicago, they will pass resolutions to say we want black history taught, but nobody teaches it. <laughs> I mean, so the result is the same. So somebody passed some symbolic, that they passed a resolution, if I remember correctly, in Illinois in the 1970s that mandated that black history be taught in schools and nobody is teaching black history. Brother Jay, when I, and, and, and when I was at a school called Chicago Vocational, I mean, not just there, but I did it everywhere. But when I was at Chicago Vocational and I was teaching my students in liberal Chicago, in, in, in democratic Chicago, I was teaching my children black history facts. I would start the day with a black history fact. Then I would go into my regular lesson and the black children. I'm at a, I'm at a school that is 100% black. As far as students, 100% black, 2000 students in the school on the Southeast side of Chicago. And I'm in there giving the students a black history fact. And the students loved it so much. They would go into the other teachers classrooms talking about what they learned in my class. The white teachers got so angry. Brother, we talking about Chicago. Brother Jay, we talking about these liberal, democratic white people were angry at me. Now, I didn't, at that time, I didn't even know that there was a law that said you should be teaching. I didn't even know that at the time. I'm just giving the children what they need. The, the liberal white Democrats, the so-called progressives in Chicago at Chicago Vocational, got angry because I'm teaching black children black history and did all these kind of underhanded things and went to the principal and said, either Muhammad goes or I go. So brother Jay, what are we talking about? You in a state where they come out and tell you, we don't want this stuff taught. I'm in a state where they say, we want you to teach it, but nobody's teaching it. The result is the same. Our children are learning it. And even so, black schools, and, and when people get together in the community and start their own charter school, right? You know, the school in uh, Abbeville, Louisiana, where we, Sister Khadija and I, were advocates for the school. And the two sisters, uh, African American sisters, that helped start it with, along with others, they the system pushed and pushed till they just had to, they closed down. Right. They found all type of impropriety terrorist stuff right. going on, all right. types of issues, all types of regulation. Even black people who want to start their own school uh, and mainly black, they have a problem with that. Right. You know, brother, and, and that's my point, brother Jay. And to, to close that last point out, we have to teach our own because it's not going to happen in Chicago. I mean, not Chicago, pardon me, but it's not going to happen in the schools. When I got to Limblom, again, it's a school that is 75 percent black. It's in a black neighborhood, but the staff is 95 percent white. And when I walked in my first day, when everybody was there, I thought I walked on a plantation. Because all the staff is white. The janitors and the security guards are black. So I'm like, man, this looks like a plantation. Yes, but a parent came to me and I sat down with this parent when I first got there. And she said, Mr. Muhammad, 
will you do something for Black History Month? Because they don't do anything for Black History Month. They have no problem celebrating LGBTQ, but they're not doing, this is what the parent told me, but they're not doing anything for Black History Month. So I made a promise to that parent and I kept my word that we were going to do something to celebrate Black History Month. This, you know, but my point to you, Brother Jay, is the, these people who they call themselves so called liberal progressives. They're not in there teaching black children black history. So the Republicans are jumping up and down doing backflips because somebody said that they're teaching CRT and, and they're going crazy. Oh, CRT, we got to get rid of it. But let me tell you, the, the real truth is they're not teaching them anything. So you jumping up and down about CRT. CRT ain't being taught. I've been in Chicago public schools for 25 years. And I've never been to a professional development in 25 years where they were talking about CRT. They are not teaching black children anything. They act like they're our friends. Yeah. And they say out of their mouth, we're going to do this. They may even pass the law. But the result in Chicago is the same as Lafayette, Louisiana. So what does that tell you? That the mindset is the same between the red state and the so-called blue state. So it's our responsibility to teach our history to our children, period. Yes, sir. Beware our fair weather liberal friends. <laughs> right. Yeah. So, uh, brother, uh, our time is winding, winding down. Give us the website. I have it. The, the yes, sir. The website is justiceforabdulmuhammad.com. On that website, you can register for the website. You can um, sign the petition. The petition is on that website. You can email the mayor, Mayor Brandon Johnson. He is the uh, he's the decision maker in this entire affair. Uh, and I'll just say this as we close. I met with the mayor one on one, just like it's you and me, brother Jake. We met on the Zoom one on one in December of 2022, and I let and and this is when everything was still happening. I let him know what was going on. He was running for mayor then; he wasn't mayor, and he just asked me, "Well, do you have some political support?" I said, "Yes, I have the Alder woman and the state rep." Then he becomes mayor, right? And everything has exploded. I was removed from the school based on these false charges, and we had a press conference at Father Flager's church on May 18th. May 19th, we get a call. Well, that night we got a uh, a message saying that the mayor wanted to meet with us the next day. So May 19th, the birth anniversary of Brother Malcolm, we had another conversation as myself, the principal's union president, Troy LaRavie, and the mayor, and we on a Zoom. We let the mayor know what's going on. And the mayor don't say, he just says, my people are going to get back with you. And to this day, the mayor and his people have not gotten back with us. So, you know, Brother Jay, uh, the sad reality is sometimes when we uh, we elect black leadership, they're not as effective as we would like them to be for our own community. You know, so you have a situation where Chicago public schools has a track record, a historical track record of attacking black children, black teachers and black leaders. But now we have a black mayor and we can't get a response. So that is the reality uh, of what's going on in Chicago. Uh, with education, but it's not just in Chicago. And I need everybody to understand it's happening all over the country. It's happening in your city where black educators are being systematically removed. Like you said, Brother Jay, they're coming with false investigations. And it tends to be the people who are the most effective educators, the ones that go along with whatever, you know, they're not touching them. You know, it's the ones that are effective and the ones that are holding the white teachers accountable, like I did at Limbloom when I found out that the white teachers were putting black folks money in their personal bank account and Chicago public schools did nothing about it and, and, and came after me from those very same teachers that were pocketing black folks money. That is the level of corruption that we're dealing with in the city of Chicago. We know Louisiana is consistently last in all, any most educational outcomes. We lead the nation uh, in those negative systems. Right. So Again, brother, I appreciate you. And, yes, uh, sir. Thank you again, brother Jay. Brother, come back and hope we get you back on Brother Darrell, Community Defender. When we get yes, back sir. again, so to speak, in South Louisiana, we appreciate you. And we're going to send this video out and we're going to make sure uh, we get the links out to uh, the others who are concerned about it. Yes, sir. Absolutely. Man, I appreciate it, my brother. Thank you so much, my brother. Thank you. Well, there you go. You have Brother Abdul Muhammad. Please, the website link is on the screen, justiceforabdulmuhammad.com, justiceforabdulmuhammad.com. Go and check it out. Give him your support. 
We appreciate all the staff and management of the AOC community media for making this possible. We want to thank William and Jacob and Brother Shahid and Sister Khadija. Get well. Uh, Black History is coming up. Uh, check out the Black African American Black History Parade that's coming up in downtown Lafayette. Again, check us out tomorrow on the Open Line Radio Show uh, here on also on AOC Community Media. We really appreciate all those. Thank you so much. <laughs>